Welcome to the section Integrate Redis in Node.js. This is part of the course Build Complex Sites with Redis and Socket.io. In this section, we will cover some ways that we can use Redis in Node.js and Express. So this should touch on all the things we covered in the previous sections about Redis, but then in the context of using it in Node.js. As we can see, we're going to start off by just integrating it and then touch on everything that we talked about with using Redis and doing that in Node.js. In this video, we will specifically be dealing with integrating Redis. This is the first step from going from the Redis command line interface to actually using Node.js with Redis. So we will start off by introducing a client we will use, and then we will actually use Node.js with that client and Redis. So this is where we apply the things we learned in the previous sections. We should have a good foundation of what Redis is and how it works. We will now see what this means when using Node.js. First, we need to cover is how to connect to Redis when in Node.js. So we will need a client to do that. So let's actually open a browser and go to the Redis website. So as you can see on the Redis website, they have a nice list of recommended clients when using specific languages or frameworks. Now if we notice here, they have Node.js. So let's go there. And we see it lists uh, quite a few here that you can use. Now we specifically will be using Node Redis, which is a recommended client for Node by Redis. So if we click this link, we'll actually go to the GitHub of the project. And from here, we can see this tells us how to use it and all the commands that we can do with this library. Now, what is great about this library is that we already know how to use it. This is because every command is actually a method off of the client that when you connect. So for example, we can see here client set that runs a set command. And this is true for every other command that we can run in Redis. So if we've used a Redis command line interface, we know how to use this client library. Now when using it, it returns with the classic Node.js form, meaning that we will have to add a callback that has an error as a first parameter and then the data as a second parameter, and we can deal with it there. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how to do this. So let's open up the directory section 3.1 and take a look at the package.json that we have there. So let's do that now. So as you can see in npm, the package name is actually Redis. And we're just installing the current version, which is 2.6.2. .2. Now in addition to this, we're using Express. So now let's actually look at how to use it. So we'll do that by jumping into the index file. And then we're going to require Express and we're going to require Redis. And then we have this config.js. So let's take a quick look at that. So looking at that, all we're doing is we're setting the connection information. Now because we're running this in Docker, it's going to be the local host. And then we are setting it to this port. So this is how we're actually going to connect to the Redis Docker container from Node.js. So let's go back to index.js. So here we come in and we create a client by using the port and the host. And again, if you're using this locally, make sure that your Docker container is running. And of course, there's a docker command.txt that runs through all the commands that you may need to use to have that Docker container running. So here, we're going to set this key called Redis key and we're going to set it to zero. And then we're going to run the increment function, which remember takes whatever's at that key and then just increments it by one. And then we're going to get that key. And again, so here is our classic Node.js function where we have the error and the reply. And we're going to take the reply of that and we're going to stick it in this very basic HTML. So it'll say our Redis and Express web application and give us a count that is in Redis key. And then we will send this. And we're going to listen on 8080. So if we go to a console and then launch this with node index.js and then run this in a browser. So I'm going to launch this in a console and then we'll look at it in a browser. So as we can see, the first request, we get a count of one, which makes sense because we set it to zero. And after the first request, we incremented it once. Now each time we refresh it, it is going to count up because it's storing it in Redis. 
So this demonstrates the fact that we can store information between requests. So for example, this would be a great way to store session data. So in between each request, we can store something about that user or client. But with Redis, we can do even more. So we can actually store information between servers. So let's jump back to the code really quick. So we're going to make a slight modification in the code. We're going to comment out the resetting of zero, because every time we launch this, this would set that back to zero. And instead of listening on 8080, we're going to say, listen for the argument that's passed in to our command. So I will save this. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to launch two processes. So I'm going to run one on 8080 by running node index.js 8080, and then run another by saying node index.js 8081. And then we'll load up both of those in tabs. So here we are back in the browser. So I'm connecting to 8080 and 8081. So I have two processes running this. Now again, these are on the same computer, but technically these could be on completely different servers in completely different parts of the world. But if they both can connect to the same Redis, they actually can share information between these pages. So let's reload this. So we see this is counting up 9, 10, 11, 12. If we come back here, I launched this, so it got 8. And if the sharing information, if this is 12, when we run this, this should increment, this should be 13. Because they're storing the same information and going from there. So as you can see, we are actually sharing that counter between two separate processes. So in this video, we were able to start using Redis in Node.js. So we use this by grabbing the NPM library Redis. Now this is a very easy and simple to use library where each command that we learned previously is actually a method off of the client. In addition to that, this also uses the common Node.js practice of using a callback that has an error and a reply with the data. So then we took that library and we put it in a simple site that showed how we can share data between requests and even further how we can share data between two different servers.